Hi, this will be a brief video showing you how to run the tomography inside of Flatiron's Refraction Statics software. At this point, I'll assume you have picks. As you can see, I have picks uh, pretty much through all my offsets on um, all my traces. And if I click around the survey, you can see that I'm pretty consistently picked here. The program doesn't require perfect picks. It doesn't even require picks on all your offsets. Uh, this particular survey has a thousand shots, about 500,000 traces, and it's picked pretty well. The, um, before I go into the tomography, however, let me show you um, how to get some information about what you're going to need when we get into the tomography. The program is going to need a range of velocities, a rough range of velocities from the starting to the ending velocities, or your shallow to your depth or your deeper velocities. And the way I get those is under delay time here, under branch assignment. Um, I will click, like for example here, uh, near zero offset, and I'll apply linear move out. And you can just drag your mouse and say there's the initial velocity, which is, you can see it's about, uh, in, this, in this case here, it's about 6100. Let me look at some other places. 6100 there. This one here may be a little slower. Here, let me uh, just go like this. So I'm just uh, dragging these velocities, not for the sake of branch assignment, just to get a, some idea of the velocity range that I'm going to see in my inner offsets here. So 5700 there. So that's that's good enough. So I have 5700. So I'm going to start off at 5500 in my as my initial velocity or my shallow velocity, and then my deeper velocity. This, this uh, refractor over here is about 6,800, so I'll use uh, 7,000. So let's say we'll use a range of 5,500 to 7,000. So I'm going to cancel this, and we'll go into tomography. And we will kind of construct a new model, and I'll name it here, and I'll call this demo 3DB. B and the program has allows for a different X and Y node spacing than vertical. So I'm going to use 150 for my surface 150 feet for my surface X and Y node spacing and I'll do 50 uh, depth steps, 50 foot depth steps. And I'll use 400 for my uh, depth, depth maximum depth, that's fine. And then the velocity here is where we put the 5,500. And then here's where we put our 7,000. Now, if the, if the program finds velocities outside of this range, that's fine. This just gives it some ballpark to get it going. Uh, this program does handle marine type surveys, but we're not, this obviously isn't marine, this is land. And so I'm going to create a new model. So the program creates a new model. And by this, we mean an initial model. So if I go to profile over here, and then I click and drag this, what I have is here's my surface topography, and I'm hanging that velocity, that initial velocity over here. You can see um, here's my velocity range. I guess I specified 5,000 to 7,000. I meant to do 5,500, but anyway. <clears throat> so there's my initial model. Now I'm going to update it, and um, all these parameters happen to be okay, 200 to 6,000. I'll just do a, I'm just going to do six iterations. And I'll let it, um, I'll do four threads. This program will handle eight, so I'll just do four. Start batch update. So as you can see, it's running through iteration one of seven. It should take about a minute to complete this task. The program is finishing. Now, if you recall, I did ask for six iterations, but it says seven. The seventh iteration is com computing residuals. So uh, we just happen to call that a, a, an, an iteration. And residuals are the shot and receiver remainders from the model. So it ray traces the model, compares the shot and receiver tomo times to the user times takes an average error or an average difference and calls that a residual. And those residuals can be added um, 
um, to the statics. So over here, we're going to compute statics. Oh, well, actually, let's look at our model first. Here's our profile. Go back over to here, look at our map. And now you can see we have our model. And the and this represents the uh, node hits. So there was a, a tendency for the program to cluster along here at about oh, about 120 feet deep or so. And then there was another refractor that was finding out here at about uh, about 250 feet deep or an elevation of about minus 180 so these are pretty much two refractors that it was finding and um, so these are our node hits our node sampling so it had more hits at red and then the blue you can see there's a few places where it had to interpolate um, and now here's our model and the model itself goes all the way up to 3600 so I started off with 5000 it found velocities actually at 3600 up near the surface over here to the left which is the north southwest part of my survey so let's compute some statics I'm going to compute some statics down to about minus 150 this is where it looks like we're getting out of the slow velocities and into the faster velocities about 56 5800 so I'm going to do uh, minus 150 here and I'm going to use a final datum of 100 and a replacement velocity of, say, 5,500. However, I'm going to, and here's my residual corrections, and I recommend you try this computing statics with and without these. So let's call it, um, let's do it with these This at this point, and we'll call them um, Tomo 3D Resid. So I'll have a clue about what I was doing there. And I'm going to force the statics to be zero mean. So if I compute the statics, it just takes a second. Now under, um, there's a several places we can look at this. Under the base map, for example, I can uh, reload the list of columns. And I'm going to plot the um, Tomo 3D Resid. So here's our residual uh, statics. I mean, here's our Tomo statics. And as you can see, they are zero mean. Zero is green here, down at the bottom. Um, they range from uh, about 15 plus to about minus 10 or so uh, negative. There's other parameters we can uh, look at on here. We can plot um, DTA under DTA, or you know under Tomo residual error. This is the actual values that are going to get that we could add to our statics, and we have the um, total error. And so these shots, this shot up here would be a um, a problem shot that we might want to look at the picks on that. And we can look at that under the pick window here also. So under here, under the pick window, we can look under Tomo 3D total error, and here's that red one, and. Um, don't see too much of a problem maybe a missed pick or two no big deal though so that's the worst when we have and we can actually apply the solution here so under here I'm going to apply the Tomo solution oh and it's actually a geometry error so um, the program the Tomo actually found the geometry problem and if I plot this azimuthally we can see that this is indeed a geometry problem uh, you can see the uh, classic um, sinusoidal movement here so here I can say move to suggested location and now that's been corrected so the tomography uh, can be applied to our data and we can also use it to find geometry problems just like we do with our normal delay time uh, uh, analysis so um, and now we have a set of statics that we can apply and export to our processing system thank you very much